Hi, it's Graham Wilson here and welcome to day nine of our personal leadership challenge. Really excited today to share with you some ideas and thoughts around how we gain momentum in today's world. How do you actually deliver at pace? How do we create some team environments where the team are operating really effectively, really efficiently and actually delivering stuff at pace? So we're going to share some insights and thoughts about how you do that and the importance of reviewing previewing and learning and how that will drive action and how we start to continually improve what we do and get better and better every day. So what I'm gonna do is take you on a journey and share my thoughts and ideas and I'm gonna take you on a reminder so far of what we've done so far. So let's, let's think about where we're at at the moment. So we have our, our authentic leadership brand in place. So our leadership brand's there and we know the sort of things that we should be doing as a leader. So in my case, my, my 10 disciplines. I've created a, an amazing team and my team have got clarity with our six P's team canvas in place. We've created a, an amazing plan on our page because we've done it in a collaborative way. We've actually communicated that really effectively. We started to align behind that and now we want to start to really get that plan in place and start to deliver really great results. So if we take a, a typical year, for example, in this case, we'll just use a year as an example. So let's say we're going to start the year in April and we're going to go to the end of March. We can break this down into chunks, can't we? So we've got quarter one, quarter two, quarter three and quarter four. So quarter one, two, three and four. So these will be our 90 day points. We can break that down into, let's say, months and you know we can break it down into weeks and days and in today's environment i guess you know, we're in a context where it's very ambiguous very uncertain very complex and and uh, really impacting on all of us then what i call the momentum really the drum beat is going to be really quick isn't it we're going to get together regularly to review reflect take the next step you know learn reflect take the next step and it's going to be very very quick so the drum beat is going to be really quick but typically when you think about this what would happen here you'd have your your daily uh, huddles, you'd have your weekly tactical meetings, probably a monthly management meeting. And then every quarter, every 90 days, you do more of a, a management plus a strategic review. Again here, same again, same here, 90 day review. And then we go again here. And of course, round about this sort of time, sort of down January, February time, we'd be reviewing backwards and updating and making sure we got a clear plan on the page for the following year. Now, of course, this plan on the page is fluid. It doesn't stay the same. We know where we want to get to at the end of the year. And you know, even that might change in today's environment, but we know we're keeping this process in place. And the reason why momentum is really important and the drumbeat is so important, because if we don't set these processes up, and we set those up, don't we, in the, the team canvas, remember the, the P, which is around process, our team processes, we set those up because what we want to do is we want to keep in control. In an agile environment, it's really important to make sure we're working together collaboratively, but we're still in control and we can adapt and we can remain agile and we can change really, really quickly. What we don't want to do is not have this drumbeat in place and then get to a situation where we're drifting off and we're doing the wrong things and eventually we're so far off track that a crisis happens and then we have to get together, have a crisis meeting and then try and drag ourselves back on track again. But everyone's in a crisis mode, so they're not thinking properly, put together a stupid plan and we end up going to another crisis and another crisis and another crisis, don't we? Um, and we end up in that crisis management situation where we're just really, really busy putting fires out all the time and we're not learning, we're not growing, we're not getting better at what we do. And that happens so much in organizations. And, and this is how you can change it by setting your drumbeat. Set the drumbeat and set the routine in place. And of course, the context the context we're actually in will change what that's like. And of course, in the present situation, it's really, really short, isn't it? We're getting together on a daily basis, looking at cash flow, looking at the next step, looking at more information and planning as we go on the hoof. So this whole process is really important. It relies on the skill of the leader to be able to actually get groups of people together to have great conversations and be able to review effectively talk about the right things, have dialogue around the right things, but able to enable the team to actually learn and agree what they're gonna to do to improve performance going forward. So what I'd like to do really is talk about this process of reviewing and learning. So we, we create the momentum, 
we set our drum beat depending on the context and then it's down to our skill level as a leader about how we review how we preview and how we get our teams to learn and how we can then go with new actions new ideas new ways of doing things to improve our performance so let's have a look at this review process now I'm sure you've probably in your time come across a model that looks something like this where we've got a plan and then we get into some doing stuff and then we check to make sure we're on the plan and then we act on it. I'm sure you've seen what was called the Deming cycle, the guy who turned Toyota around and very successful at continuous improvement, a precursor for all uh, the lean thinking and Six Sigma and obviously the Toyota uh, production system that's in place now. Now, this is really great in the 1950s. I think it needs to be more fluid now where it's more planning. Uh, we're doing is more adjustable, more flexible. The checking really now comes into this reviewing, previewing uh, and learning. And that's what I want to talk about in a moment. And obviously the acting then comes on this continuous improvement about what we're going to stop doing, start doing and continue doing. So this whole process is slightly different to what it was way back in the 50s, but it's very similar. So we, we share this a lot in, in our workshops and I was with a group of people and, and many leaders uh, in the same sort of situation as I asked them, I say, well, that's the model. We all know it. We know it from the 50s, been successful. I know we need to adapt it for today's world, but what really happens in your organization? Like to break in a couple of groups, go off for 10 minutes, have a coffee, have a walk, have a reflect, and just come back with a model about what happens really in your business. They so go away, have a conversation, lots of laughter, lots of chuckling, lots of heartache, lots of debate and discussion. They come back and I was at a group a while ago and, and this is what they came back with. So the uh, first team came back and said, uh, this, is, this is our model. We do a lot of doing. We're pretty good at doing, so we do some more doing. And then we, we do some more doing, and then we do some more stuff. And they, uh, they call this their hamster wheel. You come across this? The old typical hamster wheel we, stay so, we see so much in organizations where it just gets faster and faster and faster and faster, doesn't it? And you can't cope anymore, so you go on a holiday, uh, a couple of weeks off, and uh, first week you're ill. Yeah, second week you're worrying about what's going back to work and when you come back to work it's like going faster and faster and faster and I think those sort of things uh, are going to cause us big issues going forward. You know, once we get out of this crisis if we start to keep ourselves on this hamster wheel and just get into this whole tactical operational uh, situation where we're just doing stuff and we're keeping ourselves really busy then we're not going to grow and be adaptable enough to actually you know, be successful in this new world that we live in now. The second team, they, they came back and they went a little bit deeper in, in their thinking. What they came back with, they said, we've actually created, and this was a leadership team by the way, so they had created, they had created a culture that rewards people for being busy. Yeah, if someone asks you, I'm busy, you know, lots of projects aren't really good, maxed out, all that sort of stuff. And they said they're really good at firefighting. So firefight, the firefighting is their core, their core competence. You know, when something goes wrong, a piece of magic happens where no one's got any time until there's a problem and suddenly there's loads of time to go and rush together to solve the problem and we're really good in a crisis. So a lot of crisis management going on. And what was interesting next is what they said was that what we then do is we find something or someone to actually blame. I know I'm laughing now, I shouldn't do really, but it's so true, isn't it? What we do is we offload any accountability and the need to change because it was the weather or it was this, it was that, it's the other. It's never our fault. So what happens then is we justify that we don't need to change. So nothing really changes and we go back to being busy. And this red outer cycle is a cycle that we get on all the time. So when things go wrong, typically it's because you're, you're too busy. So logically, when would be a good time to stop and think? Just before you get busy. Would you agree? Or certainly when you are busy. So the secret is, and we all get on this hamster wheel, we get on this red cycle here, is to, when you're really, really busy, is to stop, think and reflect. I call it speeding up by slowing down. And it stops the cycle. It says, okay, let's just think about this for a moment. What's actually happening? Are we being effective? Are we on track? Are we doing the right things? And it's really important to then start to look at what I call this reviewing process. And the reviewing process is a great way to create change. It's a great way to learn. It's a great way to get your team involved in actually continually improving what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's have a look at what that review process really looks like. I like to use the analogy of a, an iceberg. So you can imagine, can't you, this is my, my iceberg in the sea and this is the, the sea level here. And you've got the bit of the iceberg above the waterline 
uh, and obviously the big base of it, a lot of it is actually under, under the waterline hidden. And in, in our context of we have a plan, we do some stuff, and now we're into this reviewing, previewing and learning concept, then this bit above the waterline is what I call the what. This is what we've done, what we achieved. So typically, most organizations are really good at this, aren't they? What they'll do is they will, they will look at the outcomes, they'll look at outputs, and they'll look at, say, KPIs, for example, scorecards, key result areas, uh, and activity that's been going on. And what happens then, of course, is that we look at that, and then we go straight to solution mode. This whole concept of, of looking at the what is really, really important. Uh, what we need to do, though, is to improve performance, is to look underneath the waterline and look at what I call the how. And this is where it gets really exciting because this is where we start to look at the methods we're actually using, uh, the processes, uh, the behavior, and the feelings. So as leaders, our job is to awaken possibility in people to deliver extra results without building confidence. So it's really important that we start get down to that feeling level because our feelings are going to drive our behavior, aren't they? Our behavior is going to drive whether we use the processes or methods or not effectively, and that will then drive the activity we do, which then drives the results we get. So it's really important from a team point of view and an organizational point of view to get a sense check of how people are feeling. So what we tend to do, there's a number of tools we use to, to talk about feelings, but one of the tools, our favorite tools, is what we call a, a moodogram, which this would be positive feelings, this is negative feelings, this is the start, and this is the end of the time we're going to review, and just get people to actually draw you know, how, how they're feeling over that period of time, let's say a month or a week or even a day. Obviously, something happened here, and obviously there's some stuff here, so I want to be asking, how do we keep this up, and, and what happened here, so we can learn from that to make sure that doesn't happen again. So that's a one way of getting people to talk about feelings. Of course, you can do it in a team situation where everyone puts a different color onto that, that chart as well and have some debate and discussion. Of course, this only works if you actually set your team up for success in the first place and we've got some level of trust and we've got some level of identity as well. So the feelings are important. What we're doing here is that at this level here, what we're doing is we're collecting data in terms of what's going well and what's going not so well. And I like to say yet. And what we're doing is we're having discussions and talking about this stuff up here, the what bit and the how bit, and we're collecting the good stuff, and we're collecting the not so good stuff over here. And, and this conversation, this dialogue, obviously is really important. You can do this virtually, of course. Uh, we can do it when we're still furloughed at home or we're sat in our office environments, and you, know, you can still have that conversation, can't you? And someone can actually share the screen and start to collect all this information. Uh, you can use stickies and there's all sorts of different software out there that will help you to use whiteboards and things like that to be effective with this. It doesn't have to be in the same room. And what we're doing is we're collecting data, honest and open data. So obviously the trust has to be in place. And what we then do is we then start to say, well, why is that happening? Because at this point here, all we have is a lot of data. We haven't actually learned anything yet. To really kickstart the learning, what we need to do is take the data and say, well, why... Why did that happen? You know, why did we achieve the results? Why were we successful here? What was this about? What's going on here? Why are we getting these great results but people are feeling really negative? And we're asking those why, why questions and we're having some really good dialogue and discussions around why that's actually happening. Once we've understood why that's happening, then we can start to take the corrective actions. So we can start thinking about what are we gonna stop doing? Yeah, so I realized actually that actually this was me running this meeting, I wasn't effective, so I'm gonna make sure I stop running meetings like that. I'm gonna start running meetings like this, and we're gonna continue doing this sort of stuff. And, and those, those three things there in terms of review at all these levels, collect the data, discuss why it happened, think about what you're gonna do differently, will then start to change all the activity we're actually doing, and even might change the plan that we have in place because we suddenly realize we can do so much more than we thought was possible. So that's a, a really effective review process. And of course, this review process is an ongoing process, an ongoing catalyst to continually improve what we do. So I hope you found that really useful. I'll share a PDF on the website. So go on to the website, which is grownwilson.com forward slash leadership inspiration. And you'll be able to get some information there in terms of the, the model, the ideas, the thoughts, and go away and actually have a think about it. perhaps 
perhaps in your team, you know, on Monday when you go back into work, perhaps you could start the team meeting with perhaps having a go at Moonogram, for example, and ask the team how they're feeling and, and get them to talk about what's going on over the last week or whatever, all that sort of stuff. And start to get this review process in place because I know when you do it, it'll actually dramatically improve your results. Plus, it's very inclusive, it's very motivational, it's very inspiring, and it's a great catalyst for change. What we'll be doing tomorrow is we're going to take our learning further. I'm going to share with you my insights and ideas about how you run really effective meetings. And we're going to take a, a slant around virtual meetings because a lot of us are actually in virtual meetings at the moment. I'm going to share some, some key tips, some ideas, some fundamentals, and some key ideas for you to actually make sure that your meetings are really, really effective. So we'll see you tomorrow. Think about the uh, reviewing process. Think about how you can connect with that and how you can start to apply that with your team meetings going forward. And I wish you every success and we'll see you tomorrow.